Um, the when we started this process several years ago, we brought in consultants from this state. The state library system has a whole lot more to do with this than I think people understand. Um, the state library system guides this whole project. The state library system tells us how many books we're supposed to have, how many computers we're supposed to have, how much space we're supposed to have. The 62,000 square feet that the building is going to be is the minimum that meets current state standards. We are less than half that now. So we don't anywhere closely meet the current state standards for what this community is supposed to have. Um, it, we don't have the number of books. We don't have the number of computers. We are seriously, seriously behind just what the current standards are. Um, the community put that library up almost 50 years ago. It's about 45 years old. Um, and they just really haven't done a whole lot to it since, folks. They added some on in the early 90s. Um, roof leaks, there's mold, there's two HVAC systems that <laughs> don't work together. If you all have been in there during the summer, you know how absolutely miserable it gets in that building. Um, just to repair some of the basic things that are wrong with it would take several million dollars. So why spend several million dollars on a facility that's outdated and doesn't meet state standards? It's the big question. So that's why the county decided several years ago to get this process started. The state sent down two consultants. The two consultants worked with us, spent hours with the library board putting together a strategic plan. We think we've got a terrific strategic plan in place. I think we understand what some of the community needs are. One of the things that um, patrons had told us that they desperately needed was a, a space for African-American history. So we are going to have a designated space in this new facility for African-American history. We are also going to have the capability, I don't know how many of you all are um, into your genealogy, but we do have a pretty extensive selection at the library of genealogical material. Unfortunately, that material is not going to last too much longer if it has to stay in the conditions it's in because those um, old, old books are not going to last too many more years unless they're in a temperature controlled environment. So part of the plans for this building will be to build a separate area for um, those collections for those old books so people can trace their, their ancestry and Georgia ancestry and Georgia history, um, but that will be climate controlled and, uh, and preserve those, those texts. Um, the plan is also uh, to include a coffee shop. It's the newest thing. You see it in bookstores, everything else. But one of the ways that we decided that it, we have the Friends of the Library who are a wonderful <clears throat> um, 501c3 corporation that assists, if it wasn't for them, I don't know if the library would have half the books it does now. But um, there's obviously a need for the library to be able to, to raise some more funds to sustain itself and to be able to do some other things. And um, so we're going to incorporate a, a small coffee shop area, sell some items, sell, you know, things that go along with computers. I mean, just all, all sorts of things, uh, jump drives. I mean, you name it. But that also will help offset some of the operating costs of this new facility. Um, our estimates actually, as far as the operating costs, since I brought that up, are about 25% below what they are now because of the difference in uh, the energy efficiency that we expect the new building to have versus what the current building has. Um, the, when the state put together this plan, they, they brought us a notebook that's about literally about five, six inches thick with all of the recommendations, all the requirements down to how each book is shelved. It's about as detailed as it gets. The state's estimate was uh, for the facility turnkey 21 to 22 million dollars. Um, in working with the county, in working with the county uh, project manager, in working with the architect we selected, we are fairly certain we can get that number down to closer to 16 million dollars. The uh, county is only providing the library with 13 million off of this loss. They're not funding the entire project. The remaining funds have to come from the state. Um, they fund one major library project, sometimes two or three each year. That's pretty much it. We'll hopefully get that money if our elected officials in Atlanta will help us uh, in the le legislative session in 2014. But um, that will only be a million dollars. Uh, the rest of the, the funds have to come from the sale of the property to South Georgia Medical Center, who obviously wants it 
as desperately as we want to get out of it. So, um, uh, so that should take it up to right about $16 million for the, for the turnkey for the facility, not $22 million. Um, we are extremely excited at the prospect of being able to offer patrons the things that they need, that the citizens of this community deserve. Like you said, the, the computers, it's just ridiculous. They are packed morning. I mean, literally, from the minute the library's open to the minute it's closed, they're packed. And everybody's like, oh, it's just kids going in and playing games. No, it's not, folks. It's teachers. It's students doing their homework. It's, you know, the Sean Strickland, who's the IT person, teaches people how to use the computers. And he teaches teachers how to do PDFs and Word documents. I mean, he, this is not just people going in and playing on the computers. These are people that are actually doing work on these computers and doing serious things and filling out job applications and college applications and everything else that's currently online that you don't have access to if you don't have a computer. And unfortunately, it's hard to convince some folks in this town that every person in this county doesn't have a computer at home. Um, it, it's amazing to me how many people think, well, just tell them to go buy one for themselves. Well, sure, that's... Real easy, isn't it? Everybody's got a couple thousand dollars sitting around. Um, so that's a vital, vital service. We are currently 60 computers less than what the state requires right now. We need at least 150 in that main facility. And even at that, that's um, even in the new facility, that's, that's kind of a low estimate. But hopefully that will help to meet the need, just the current need of what uh, this community is looking for. Um, people forget about the books. They forget about the children's programs. Um, you know, they're talking books. We have uh, the access for the um, folks who cannot read or cannot, um, or, or, you know, blind, um, have access to the, the talking books. Um, there are just any number of services that are provided by that library that, um, it, you know, it, it's just a shame that people think that, it's somebody else or they don't need it, you know, I, I don't quite get it. I mean, the folks that use that library are us. It's all of us. It's for all of us. Your tax dollars do augment it. The state augments it. But that library, that facility is built for this community. And it's a very vital part of this community and a very vital part of the future of this community for education, for, um, you know, attracting industry, for everything. So I would certainly hope that um, you all can see the need and agree that there is a need and will help us to um, get this project approved um, so we can do something for the community and for the citizens of this community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kay. Um, she makes a really good point to say um, that the library currently sits on property that would be um, used then by the hospital. And the expansion of our hospital is an, the hospital is an economic engine in our area. And as our hospital grows and we, come be, we become a healthcare destination for South Georgia, instead of our people going to Savannah or Columbus to go to the hospital, people will come from there to come to our hospital, spending more dollars here and making more jobs. Um, so moving the library is a way to um, make the hospital uh, a growing place. Um, and a thing that Sam said, I remember now what I wanted to say. He was saying about, you know, if you're not happy um, with what's on the list, you should have been talking to your elected officials. Um, that's one of the things that I really hope to be able to improve in our community is that we have dialogue and that we have transparency and that people really feel like they've been included in the process. So when it comes time to spend those pennies, it's already projects that everybody's all revved up about. We don't have to be said going, oh, well, gee, nobody told me that about this, sprung this project on me. They sprung a fire truck on me in Hayhira. I was surprised by that. Um, there won't be any surprises because we'll be having dialogue all the time and people will really feel like this is our community. We're all in this together. So thank you very much, both of you, for coming.